Okay, here we go. Welcome. This is Cooper Still Standing. I'm Jeff Cooper, and I'm still standing. Today's guest today in the studio is Jane Fix. Jane is a medical cannabis patient advocate and spokesperson who has been actively involved in the educational sector of Arizona's industry since 2011. During the beginning of her career, Jane recognized a lack of resources for new patients. With a background in botany and a degree in education from Arizona State University, Jane pivoted her expertise to the new cannabis industry. She went on to spend four years as head patient services for Monarch Dispensary in Scottsdale, where she was voted one of the top 10 influential women in Arizona cannabis by the Respected Women's Group. Respected Women's Grow Group, right? Let me get that right. Jane was named as an inspirational member of the Canna Friends community. Fix has represented at large scale cannabis conferences throughout the, the country and devoted such of her time to the industry advocacy efforts while supporting and guiding patients welfare. In 2016, she was appointed director of patient services at Soul Flower Dispensary by Copper State Farms. As a firm believer in cannabis and as a firm believer in cannabis as medicine, Jane specializes in working with new patients focused on seniors and women's health. Jane is currently the Director of Patient Services with Soul Flower Dispensary, where she is responsible for the Educational Wellness Program, an Arizona's first-of-a-kind mixed-use dispensary with adjoining cafe and classroom that is accessible to the public. Jane oversees class at the curriculum, which includes Cannabis 101, Medical Cannabis for Seniors, and a Guide to Essential Oils, and more. She also offers free one-on-one -on -one consultation to patients. Welcome, Jane. How are you? I'm so happy to be here, Jeff. This is going to be really fun. God, this is great. I've, I've, <clears throat> yeah, I've been really excited about doing this. So, hey, where do you want to start? Um, let's start about the classroom because it's yes. just not me in the classroom. So I do uh, the cannabis classes, so anything cannabis related I teach. But we have an incredible staff with many talents. So we have a woman that does meditation. We have a, and the same woman does tapping classes. I have a certified herbalist on staff that we're fortunate enough, um, I convinced her to do herb classes. I have uh, Bex Metzger, who you know, and she teaches art classes over there. Oh, super, every two super. Weeks. That's awesome. So I just, um, I just took her Van Gogh art class. Um, I enjoy this so much, and I think the community, once they have a full awareness of what's going on mm -hmm. th in a year, we've been open six months, and I can see the growth. But mm -hmm. in a year, it's just going to be commonplace. We're going right. to go have lunch and stick stick our head in the classroom mm -hmm. and see what's going on. Yeah, well, you know, the whole community has changed you know, dr drastically over the last few years where now you could do this. Back in the beginning, there was no way you could do this and have a classroom or have a cafe right. next to your dispensary. And I want to remind people that you still have to be a patient to get into the dispensary part. Into the dispensary, which is behind mm -hmm. glass walls, kind of like an Apple store. But mm -hmm. the front 2,000 feet that run the front of the building is open to the public. It, there's a lounge area. There's a restaurant. There's a classroom. I have two mm -hmm. consulting rooms that are kind of soundproof, but, you know, you're not trapped in mm -hmm. there. Um, so it's it's a huge space that anyone can walk into and have mm -hmm. a meal and and get some education. Yeah, okay. So, you know, again, when I originally talked to you, uh, you know, I was really focused on talking about, you know, cannabis and senior citizens. Mm -hmm. And um, and the, and I noticed in your, your bio, you have a, a big section on education of seniors. And maybe you can step through that for the, the older crowd or the people that have parents that want to think about cannabis for their family members. Right. Um, so seniors are very curious. My oldest patient came to me at 102 Oh so, my God! So 102, and she passed at 104. God, pot smokers. Um, and she <laughs> she was so. When you have a senior that is contemplating getting a patient card, mm -hmm. you kind of come to the reality that they always thought out of the box or they started thinking out of the box when they got sick of the medical care they were getting right so a lot of times patients are just sick of going to the doctor for eight years and not getting any results and not even getting listened to mm -hmm. um so 
when I sit down with patients, first of all, I don't promise any cures on anything. Mm -hmm. I, um, cannabis is the most potent anti-inflammatory plant in nature. So, um, we have over 500 active chemicals in the cannabis plant. It's very, very complicated and it gives relief in many ways. Um, but I don't promise, you know, right. everything's magically disappearing. Yeah, well, you've made a very good point. It's it's very complicated. Yes. There's a lot of cannabinoids in the system, and, yes. and in, in, in the industry, we're able to strip out some of them right. and, and reuse them or add to them as well. Like the vapor pens, those are all, you know, uh, stripped out flour and added mm -hmm. back in and, mm -hmm. you know, made flavors and stuff like that, you know. Then RSO, of course. Now, uh, RSO, I think, is a really um, uh, Rick Simpson oil. Rick Simpson oil. You know, have you had any experience with that? So I don't call it Rick Simpson oil because Rick Simpson isn't here making it, and he didn't make it in the cleanest fashion to begin with. So I call it full cannabis extract oil. Mm -hmm. um, I've had plenty of experience with that. I've worked with numerous patients that. Um, maybe have cancer and mm -hmm. have gone through chemo and radiation and don't want to uh, continue or want to use it as adjunct mm -hmm. therapy. Um, there is, and I don't want to dive too deep in this, but there is 10 types of cancer mm -hmm. that benefit from a higher CBD ratio. And so people should be very careful when they start dosing themselves mm -hmm. with a full cannabis extract oil thinking that a high THC is the answer to everything. That's absolutely correct about that. You know, because, you know, RSO is, you know, uh, well, I agree with you, first of all, Rick Simpson's not here making it. I also agree with you, no one makes it like Rick, Rick, like Rick did, yeah. right? Because right. he basically used a crock pot and did it that way. Yeah. You know, and all today we're using distillants and stuff like that, and we're really high grading that stuff, well, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I've seen some benefit with, with uh, Rick Simpson oil, and uh, you know I've seen quite a few patients benefit from it. But it's not your average product; it's not for everybody. And uh, when people first start out with, with Rick Simpson oil or the RSO oil that was called when I was around, you know you'd have to stage up to it. You just not you're just oh, not yeah. you're not going to just take it and yeah. go okay. I'm going to get like really high today. Right. You know, it doesn't right. work that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Hey, um, so if my dad came to you and said, hey, man, um, I'm, I'm thinking about using cannabis. Mm -hmm. I'm my dad's 92 years old. OK, he uh, in fact, my, my dad is a stud. You know, he's 92 years old. He rides his bike almost 10 miles every day mm -hmm. still today. He's very active and stuff like that. And uh, so he doesn't take any pills. He right. does. I, I think he takes a little bit of uh, a cholesterol pill, like a half a pill. I mean, it's just very, very mild. So he's blessed in life with good health on that what well, if he came to you and say hey man my my joints are a little sore or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. um what would your conversation maybe look like to him so when someone is of that age in their 80s and 90s and they've never used cannabis before and they're looking for it for some pain relief it's not unusual for me to dose that patient solely at night for about 10 nights mm -hmm. and and maybe titrate up during that 10 night period mm -hmm. and then cut the dose in half and swing it to the day. So mm -hmm. say he came to me and we started him at 2.5 or five milligram edible at night. Mm -hmm. And the reason is um, the receptor system isn't fully ready. It's not mm -hmm. like it's been closed off to cannabis and the older people get the more tendency I err with on the side of caution and, and dose them at night and then swing that dose mm -hmm. into the day in about half the amount they were taking at night. Yeah, you said something really important there, um, the way you dose is as an edible. You know, mm -hmm. there's multiple ways to, to uh, take in cannabis. You know, you have the, the flour you can smoke, mm -hmm. you can vaporize it, mm -hmm. you can have a, a brownie, a cookie, you could have shatter, right. sauce. I mean, yes. all kinds of ways you could do this. What is your, per, what would you be the direction of like a senior citizen if they're if you're entering into the cannabis world because it can be kind of scary sometimes if you right. see some of the stuff it looks kind of scary and it's like right. oh my god what am i doing right um so i kind of let them dip their toe in the bath water and i let th through a series of questions on lifestyle and and what they want to do personally 
if they're wanting to stay away from any kind of inhalation, I will tell them, you know, we can do that. We can work with what you want to do, but I always let them know that the efficacy might be better if we work this direction, Mm -hmm. but I just get them started very gently. And then as they become at ease with the plant, Mm -hmm. that's when you start opening up all the doors because you there's multiple methods of consumption. There's multiple worlds out there in the cannabis world to experience. And if you just limit yourself to one method and say, oh, this work, mm-hmm. this is it for me, or oh, Blue Dream's my strain and I don't want to smoke anything else, mm-hmm. you're just, it's a very closed mindset. Right. You're not. Yeah. Did it, did it, did it, special alert. Did it, did it, special alert. <laughs> Not really, guys. Hey, I just want to give a special shout out to to Jane Fix for being on the Cooper Still Standing podcast today. You know, she was super great to be here. She was, you know, super smart and and great to, to talk to. You know, make sure you check out the rest of the the series with Jane Fix and myself. You know, having viewers like you is really important. You know, and so make sure you know you you know leave a comment. You know, tell us what you feel. Tell us, you know, what, you know, what you, what you really feel. I'll, I'll answer it. I really will. I think it's important for me to share my feelings with people. <laughs> Go ahead. Just leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you know, make sure you subscribe and, um, you know, hit the bell, man. Hit subscribe and hit the bell, man. And, and, and join us for Cooper Still Standing. This is Cooper Still Standing. I'm Jeff Cooper, and I'm still standing.